I've got no roots, but my home was never on the ground. I've got no roots, but my home was never on the ground. Hey guys, I'm making this video so that you guys can learn a little bit more about the animals that I own as well as know which ones actually belong to me. A lot of my animals are rescues that I have adopted so I'll also leave information regarding that and you guys can check it out if you are interested in adopting yourself. With the horses, some of these horses may not be around for the years to come because they are projects and I do work in horse sales a lot so some of them may be resold to new homes as that is part of my job however this is a good reference that is up to date as of now the first horse I'm going to talk about is my horse Milo if you have been following me for any amount of time you've probably heard about him as he is in most of my videos I adopted him from the BC SPCA as a two-year-old and since then have done all of the work related to breaking and training him into the horse he is today Milo is now 6 years old and he will be 7 in 2019. He stands around 16 one hands and I show him under the name Milestone 4. He is not registered because he is a rescue and he was just bred great by people who were not very responsible with their horses. But we DNA tested him and he came back numerous different types of warm blood and we also know that the stallion that was out with them was a thoroughbred. So our our best guess is that he's a thoroughbred warm blood cross. Milo has taught me the most of any horse that I've ever owned as he has been such a challenge, but it has been such a rewarding experience and we have really developed an amazing relationship with each other and I wouldn't change a thing. I'm so glad that I adopted him from the SPCA. And I don't want to go fully into his rescue story as I have done several videos on that that I'll link below for those of you who are interested in a more in-depth version of it. Milo is a very quirky horse, so he has a lot of weird things that he does. Um, he doesn't like eating treats that are too soft of a texture, so he won't eat stuff like bananas just because of the texture. He'll spit it out. And he hates birds. For whatever reason, he hates them. I'm not sure why, but he hates them. I mostly do dressage and jumpers with Milo. He is my show jumping prospect. We're working on moving our way up the levels in that, but he has some confidence issues that he struggles with, so that is a bit of a setback. But he is exceptionally talented, and I'm sure he will be able to go very far so long as his mind keeps up with his physical talent. Milo is not an easy horse to ride as he is very sensitive and very particular but we match well together most of the time and as a general rule he is really quite good. He is very good at bridalist riding and can be ridden basically anywhere bridalist and I hope to continue expanding his knowledge on this. Milo is my heart horse and I can't ever see myself selling him. I think that he would be very likely to end up in a bad situation if I were to sell him and I don't really ever want to part with him so I am hoping he will be a forever horse and that is my plan for him as of right now. Simon is a fairly recent addition to the family. I got him from an auction in mid-September. He was headed to the kill pen if no one had bid on him. So he is one of the two horses that I rescued from the auction and then he shipped down from Dawson Creek which is about 13 hours away from me and arrived here with me a few days later. I did not know anything about him when I first got him other than the fact that he was a pony and he was cute and he was young. So when he arrived it was quite the surprise to find out that he was completely feral and could not be handled at all. If you push too hard, he would try to kick you or bite you, but it wasn't really out of aggression. It was because he was absolutely terrified of people. So anyways, Simon is an approximately three-year-old, around 12-hand pony. I have no idea what his breed is, but I might DNA test him. If that's something you guys would be interested in, just let me know in the comments. We have basically no information on him other than his age from the vet but even then we don't have an exact age because we're still waiting for him to lose his next set of teeth and that'll give us a more accurate age. 
Over the last couple of months of owning him, I have done a lot of work to get him more comfortable with people, and now he is halter broke and can be handled, even though he is still quite nervous. So for the next while, all of the work is just going to be getting him even more comfortable with people, and then eventually starting him under saddle and getting him safe enough to be ridden by kids, because he is quite small, so he is going to end up being a kid's pony but he's a long way from being safe enough for kids. So we're just gonna take it day by day and kind of see how it goes with him. He is really shy of people that are new, especially just like Milo was, but he's definitely a lot more cautious than Milo was. Simon's aggression has pretty much completely gone away, but if he feels threatened, he still will stand up for himself if he feels he needs to. Simon is very food motivated. He absolutely loves to eat. He'll eat pretty much anything you give him. He really likes coming out and going for walks when there's other horses around and he's very smart and curious and he definitely loves being trained with positive reinforcement. This has been so important in getting him comfortable with people. With horses like Simon, there's really no other way to get them initially comfortable without completely flooding them and scaring the crap out of them. Eventually, the plan for Simon will probably be leasing him out or selling him because he is quite small, and while I can ride him without causing him any distress based on both of our weights, I will look tall on him for sure, so it doesn't really make sense. For me to keep him long term as a riding horse solely for me but given his past and what we know of him if we ever do lease him out or sell him we will be very very picky about where he goes roulette is another horse that i rescued at the same time as simon she was also headed to the kill pen a kill buyer had actually won the bid on her, but he was nice enough to sell her back at the same cost that he bought her for, so she was rescued from going to slaughter as well. Roulette is approximately 2 years old and she stands around 14 hands. I would guess that she's some sort of quarter horse cross, but again we aren't really sure what she is. So she could also be DNA tested and that is something that I might do. Roulette was handled really nicely before she went to the auction. She is super sweet, she loves people, she's not afraid of humans at all. She was halter broke when she arrived and she's not spooky, she handles new things really really well. And all in all is just such a nice and well adjusted little filly. She is pony height right now but I have a feeling that she is going to end up finishing around 15 hands when she's done growing. The plan for Roulette is to get her started under saddle in the new year and just kind of see how it goes. She could very well be a project that I might sell at some point. I might also lease her out, or I could end up using her as a lesson horse because she is just so quiet and kind. So it really just depends on how it goes, but regardless of what goes on with her, the plan is to get her a good foundation before she moves on to another home if she is sold. Roulette is also nicknamed Rue, and she is just a really nice, happy-go-lucky horse and is so pleasant to be around. She is a barn favorite. She has some silly quirks like she will not eat carrots or apples. We're still working on that. She will eat other treats, but she's kind of picky about what she eats. Shortly after being rescued, Roulette scratched her leg on a blackberry bush and the thorn from the bush must have nicked her tendon sheet and basically it resulted in a rather significant hawk infection. So she was hospitalized for that but has been healing since and doing very very well. So we're going to start her back in groundwork soon and then the goal will be to work towards getting her broke by the spring. George is the most recent addition to my horsey family. He is a three-year-old thoroughbred gelding that I used to gallop while he was still racing. His racing name is Bionic and I will be keeping that as his show name. George is incredibly fancy and he is so sweet and cuddly. And for a three-year-old, especially right off the track, he has an amazing temperament. So he's gonna make an absolutely lovely riding horse. I bought him knowing that he had a pre-existing bone chip and was told that it wouldn't cause a problem. 
Bone chips are fairly common in horses and a lot of horses who have them are absolutely fine to have them stay in and be in continued work with no problems. But unfortunately, after getting a second recommendation, I found out that he needed it removed. So he has now gone in for surgery and had that done and he is on rest for a few months before he can return to training. And then when he does return to training, he is intended to be my 2019 Thoroughbred Makeover Project horse, where I will show him either in the freestyle and show jumping or show jumping and dressage. I am really excited to start working with George and being able to start training him for the Thoroughbred Makeover Project. He is by my favorite Thoroughbred Stallion that stood locally named Stefan Otis and he is just such a dream to ride and so fancy. Um, he is one of my favorite horses that I have ever galloped and I'm really excited to have him as part of my family right now. George was bred, owned, and trained all by the same person and she took such good care of him and absolutely adored him. So I have all of his history and a lot of baby pictures of him. So it is really such a blessing to be a part of working with such an amazing horse who has come from such great connections. George didn't have an unsuccessful racing career, but his owner decided to make the decision to retire him and sell him to me because we know each other and she knew it would be a good home. And she wanted to be breeding horses that were useful in disciplines other than racing so that they could have lengthy careers as riding horses. George loves treats and he usually answers you when you call him for the first time. He is super friendly and absolutely adores people. Simon is his best buddy and they love each other, but unfortunately they are separated right now because George is on stall rest for the next little while. George stands around 16 two hands and he is still growing, so he'll probably finish around 16 three or 17 hands. He's a pretty big boy and I don't really know what the plan is for George in the future in terms of selling him, but I'm definitely keeping him for the Retired Racehorse Project in October 2019, and then he might be a horse that would be really well suited to be my mom's riding horse. So we're just going to kind of see how it goes. He is such a sweet boy and deserves the best. The last honorable mention for my horses is the in utero foal that a mare that I got off the racetrack named Donut is carrying. She is due June 3rd, so it's still a little while yet, but she's in full to an Oldenburg stallion named Banderas, who I have pictured in this video. And Donut is sold to a home pending having the foal, but the foal will be in my name and it will be intended to be a jumping prospect for me. As for, as for my pets that are not of the horsey variety, I have my cat Scout, who I adopted from the BC SPCA in February 2016. She is almost three years old. I got her when she was just a little baby, and she is the sweetest little girl ever. I absolutely adore her. She loves people. She loves cuddling. She likes to chase her little cat toys, and she'll bring them back to you like a dog does sometimes. And she's just so much fun to have around. I'm so glad that we have her as part of the family. She keeps the dogs in line. She is definitely the house leader. The dogs are under her control and under her reign. She is quite the character and I adore her. Next we have Moses and he is an 11 year old West Highland Terrier. We got him when he was about a year and a half old and we were given him from a family who wanted him to go somewhere where he could grow up around younger people. So that's how we got him and since then he has been a part of our family and he's a really nice little guy. He got attacked by a coyote a couple years ago and almost died and has since recovered from it but he has more anxiety now and doesn't really enjoy being out quite as much which is why I don't have as much footage of him. He's a lot more comfortable being in more confined areas like a house or small yards so he's a lot happier hanging out on the deck and staying close to the house and doesn't really come down to the barn as much. Phoebe is my five and a half month old blue healer cross puppy that I adopted from an organization called Flirting with Fido. They rescue strays from the streets of Saskatchewan where it is legal to shoot stray dogs. 
Um, so they rescue them from being culled because they have so many strays there. So they shipped her down to me in British Columbia as an eight week old puppy and I've had her since mid-August and she is so much fun. She is really high energy, she's super smart, she's stubborn and just full of life and she's just such a blessing to have around. Phoebe is best friends with a lot of the barn dogs that come and go as well as the ones that also live on the property and she is trying to make friends with Scout LaRue but Scout isn't really down for that.